Sometimes I'm asked, well, have you reversed your insulin resistance? <laughs> It's a complicated question. Sometimes the questions that I get asked are asked in a very polite, respectful tone, and other times they're asked with a sort of a implied sneer and a bit of a mocking tone. Uh, this particular questioner asks it politely, so I will answer him. I don't typically answer the mockers, but once in a while I might, if I'm feeling a little bit mocking myself. <laughs> anyway, this person says, I'm 45. I was diagnosed type 2 three weeks ago. So, very uh, new diagnosis here, at least when I got this comment. It's been a little while. Anyway, uh, they say, I have four young children. I want to be around with all my hands and feet and vision. Well, I don't blame you for that. That's what we all want. And the good news is uh, there's no reason why that can't be the case for you. So many internet doctors say you can reverse type 2 diabetes. My question is this, sir. You've been at the low-carb lifestyle for 20 years or so, but if you drink a Coke or eat a bagel, your glucose goes through the roof. How is this? Haven't you reversed your insulin resistance? Well, as I said in the intro, it's a little bit complicated. Uh, yes, my glucose can still spike pretty severely when I eat a lot of carbs, and uh, by this point, I'm not really expecting that will ever change. There are a couple of mitigating factors. One is my body's not used to carbs anymore, at least not used to lots of carbs. It's used to a few. And so your body gets into kind of a rhythm, and it gets to your, your, your metabolic system has a memory. Your pancreas has a memory, and it expects a certain kind of a meal. And when you upset the apple cart and you give it something it wasn't expecting, it kind of overreacts. So part of the reason probably that I spike so high with a, a large carbohydrate meal or a high carbohydrate feel, uh, food is that my body's just not used to that. And so it's used to small little low-carb meals and foods. And as a result, it can somewhat overreact. But I'm still going to admit that uh, probably no matter how I ate or what I ate, I would still have a problem with carbs, and I expect I'll have that the rest of my life. On the positive side, there are some things that uh, have really improved with me. I find that I don't quite spike as high with as I used to with high-carb foods. And also, I find that my dawn effect is minimal. Oftentimes, I hear very scary reports and, and terrified reports and frustrated reports from people who say, My glucose throughout most of the day is pretty good, but when I wake up in the morning, it's 140, 150, 160. I haven't eaten since 6 or 7 p.m. the night before. What in the world is going on? Well, that is an issue, and especially for diabetics. Everybody's going to have a little bit of that dawn effect, but that's really too much. That means there's some underlying issues, and the reality is I don't have that. When I wake up, my glucose is usually excellent uh, compared to what it was the day before. It's, it's usually gone down somewhat over the night. Now, it will drift up somewhat if I don't eat. So, and then it'll, it'll, it'll drift up till maybe, I don't know, 10, 10, 30, 11. A lot of times by 12, 31, just before I eat, it's started to drift back down. And it never goes too high. So that is a positive thing for me. I just don't have a big dawn effect. Um, and, and another thing to consider is if you're just going by the fact that your body can spike when you have a high-carb meal or a high-carb food, uh, guess what? Most of the adult population in America is right there, whether they're diabetic or not. There's a lot of people that have never been diagnosed as diabetic. But if you give them a couple of donuts, you give them a big baked potato, whatever, a high-carb food, their blood sugar is going to spike. Now, if you ask them, are you diabetic? They'll say, no. You say, why, why do you think you're not diabetic? They'll say, well, I had an A1C done. The doctor said I'm fine. said my A1C is 5.5, 5.6. So I'm definitely not diabetic. But they're a spiker. And uh, I, I'm just convinced that probably for most people over the age of 40, 
that's the case. And oftentimes people much younger than 40. I had a case with my own son who is skinny. He's always been skinny all his life. He's been skinny. And at the time, this was some years ago, at the time he was in his 20s, he's 20s, he's in his 30s now. And he went with me to a, uh, a donut shop to kind of make a point about donuts and how they spike. I said, well, would you like to, me to buy you a couple donuts? He was my cameraman. And so he was joining me there. And I said, would you like me to buy a couple donuts? We'll test your blood sugar and see how far you spike. He said, sure. So he ate a couple of donuts. We tested in about an hour and he was up to somewhere close to 190. Now, this is a skinny 20-some-year-old that uh, was not the least bit worried about diabetes, and he still isn't, although to me, he, he, he showed some signs of insulin resistance. And another thing is, your body's not going to work as well in your old age. You can control it by the diet you eat, but it's just not going to work the way it did when you were younger for most of us. And uh, you adapt to that. For example, when I was younger, I didn't need to wear glasses, but now I, I wear glasses. I've been wearing them for a long time. And, you know, I, I could just take my glasses off and say, well, I'm determined I don't need these babies, but the truth is I do. And guess what? I've adjusted to that. I don't consider it a big deal. I don't go around crying and moaning and groaning. Oh, I have to wear glasses. It's so horrible. Uh, I just put them on and wear them. And so the same is often going to be true for people uh, with uh, insulin resistance or with uh, the tendency to be diabetic, uh, they're going to spike. They're going to spike when they eat those high-carb meals. Give them a big bowl of sugary cereal, they're going to spike. Give them a big pasta dinner, they're going to spike. Give them uh, a big mound of rice with their dinner, they're going to spike. And so my words is uh, my word to you is, if you spike when you're eating uh, high-carb foods and meals, well, join the club. There's a whole lot of us there. And I, I just don't worry about it. Uh, I guess technically my insulin resistance isn't perfectly controlled. But, hey, I'm doing very well. My A1C is down <laughs> in the very low fives, uh, around 5.1 or so. Uh, everything's going fine. And uh, so I, I just don't worry about it, but uh, I will confess that uh, I have a tendency to spike. But uh, I think the, the reason most people think they don't spike is because they never test their blood sugar. I think if, if they did, <laughs> the, the great majority of adult Americans would spike and even some of the teens. All right, well, here is another uh, comment left under one of my videos. This person says, uh, and, and they put it under my video that talks about phase one, phase two, which is phase one is the most severe form of carbohydrate, carbohydrate restriction and really being strict on yourself. Absolutely no snacks. Uh, six hour minimum, uh, uh, six hour maximum window of eating and so forth. And then talking about, well, you might be able to try a few things once you get past the phase one period. And you might be able to eat a few beans or a little bean soup here and there. And there's a few things you might be able to get away with. Anyway, this person says, Hello, Pastor Pollock. This video is the absolute truth. I just started watching your videos this week. But I've been following this uh, two-phase approach ever since my type 2 diabetes back in April 2021. So even without watching my videos, he kind of had it figured out. He may have heard it from somebody else. He says, I follow this approach. My A1C went from 9.4 to 5.3 in four months. He said, now this was his phase one. So four months time, 9.4 to 5.3. Below is the progress I've made since the diagnosis without medication. So no meds here, no insulin using this two phase approach. So in April, 2021, he had a 9.4. He says, that's when I started phase one. By June 2021, he had a 6.4. By August 2021, he had a 5.3. Now, that was all in the phase one program. But he says, when I got to the 5.3, I started phase two, which was to moderate my diet a bit and kind of go a little bit easier. It doesn't mean you go back to eating breakfast cereal and donuts, but he, he just took it a little easier and started experimenting. What can I eat that maybe I didn't even dare to eat before? So he says, when he wrote this comment, 
which would have been in November of 2021, he says it was a 5.6. So he was in phase two. He drifted up a bit, 5.3 to 5.6, but uh, not that bad. And he says continuing in phase two with modification. So he's, he's like, all right, I went up to 5.6. I'm not totally thrilled with that, uh, but that's not too bad. I'm in phase two, so I'm going to modify a bit. I'm going to see what uh, I need to change. Well, I call that tinkering with or tweaking his diet. And this guy is a good researcher. He's, he's watching himself carefully. He's checking uh, how things affect his blood sugar, how his diet, how his lifestyle is working for him. And he's allowing Mike the meter and, and uh, the A1C test to, to dictate how much he needs to modify, how much he needs to change, what he can add or reintroduce to his diet. To me, very, very smart. Uh, I love the approach the approach. So what you, where you end up is, uh, is, is really, it's on you. I, I, I never tell someone, well, here's the A1C that you ought to have. Now we do talk about the fives club and I, I think I'm safe to say nearly every diabetic uh, can get into the fives without uh, too much trouble. It may take some time, but you should be able to do it. And even if you're a type 1 and you have to take long-acting insulin and the short-acting insulin, we, we hear from type 1s all the time that are in the 5s or even in the 4s. So even for a type 1, it can be done. Uh, so, But you've got to figure out what is my safe range, what is my happy place when it comes to A1C. Now, that puts you in a unique club because most people, they're not even thinking about that. They'll just go to the doctor and he may say, well, you got a 5.8. It's pre-diabetic, but not too bad. You better watch your sugar a little bit, maybe lose a few pounds. And that's about all they think about. Yeah, I guess I ought to lose a few pounds, maybe avoid that second piece of pie. But they, they don't take it seriously. I like the way this guy takes it seriously. He says, I went into phase one, got it down to 5.3, went to phase two, drifted up a bit. Now I'm modifying. Well... That's that's known as research. That's known as uh, tweaking your diet for optimal blood sugar. And when you're focusing on your lowering your blood sugar by diet, guess what? You're also lowering your insulin levels. So those of you that only want to hear about insulin, don't start screaming at me. Because when you do it by diet, the insulin level is going to follow right along and it's going to come down as well. If you're trying to lower your your uh, glucose levels by taking extra pills and some insulin, then your insulin may be off the charts and you may be doing yourself a great disservice. I'm not saying you, there's not a place to take uh, medication or even insulin if you have to. But if your pancreas is working fine, there, there shouldn't be much reason to need medication and pills except maybe at the first just to relieve your pancreas and give it a break for a while. Anyway, uh, a lot of this is on us and we have to be responsible. When my doctor gives me some advice about how I should eat, what I should accept, if he tells me 5.9 is perfectly fine, don't even try, he's not the one that's going to have to live with the consequences of me living at a 5.9 or a 6.3 or a 7.1. And there are some doctors, if you can just get into the sevens, they'll tell you you're fine and you don't need to try any harder. But they do not have to live with that. They just give you the advice and move on to patient number 23 for the day, and they just move along. You've got to live with whatever you decide is your optimal A1C and, and glucose levels. And therefore, my thought is better to err on the side of caution, better to be a little stricter, not by taking that extra medication, not by jamming my body with uh, insulin I inject, but by uh, watching my lifestyle and making sure that I don't eat too many carbs. Well, that's about it. Hope you'll give this uh, video a like with a click that uh, thumbs up and hope you'll subscribe so you can be notified when we post new videos. God bless and see you again soon.